Tanner for us is a real base. We use it a lot through the season. Uh, Nikki and the whole team there are really welcoming. We stayed there for a long time, so we use it for all our other tours in the Simpson Desert or the Madigan Line. Um, I just think it's nice for when they arrive as guests to see a station, that station welcoming, um, all the beds and everything is set up. We do the welcoming dinner. Uh, it's a great night, it's a great feed in the old movie set, which is really cool. Uh, it feels like you're in a really old pub, so it's a great way for everyone to get together. We head off early the next day after breakfast at Oramina. Here we go, we're ready to go, pumped and excited. Really, this will be the best trip of my life. Absolutely tick it off the bucket list. You ready, boys? We're ready, mate. Oh, born ready. We're born to go. We're born ready. Looking forward to it? Certainly am, mate. It's going to be a good day, huh? Been looking forward to it for bloody six months. <laughs> born to be wild. <laughs> And we head out of Alice and we initially turn onto the Tanami Road and then we turn on to the basically due west and we head towards uh, Kunawaraji, the community on the Canning Stock Route. So first of all our first fuel stop is Papunya, uh, which is really nice, the art centre there, which is open. Um, it's good for the guys to see that, it was closed this year unfortunately. And then just the ranges off to the left to the south. I think that whole road, even though people think it's straight and that first day we do over 700 k's in distance and think that it's a little bit boring, the ranges change all the time and the scenery and uh, you know, Huss Bluff and all that area in the back of Papunya and Kintor is absolutely gorgeous. So um, I like that run through there that day. It gets everyone in the feel of riding that with the twins and the big bikes if they've never done a big bike tour into King Tour on the border of WA, we fuel there, we have lunch on the road, uh, snags and onions, uh, and then we head off and we camp basically just to the west of the Western Australian borders. The first day is a big day, but um, you know, really enjoyable, great scenery, open country. We had a bit of rain this year, which is phenomenal out there. What do you think yesterday, boys? It was a hard day, <laughs> but um, a good heart, so I was very, uh, very that I've made it. <laughs> no, it was good, I really enjoyed it. And yeah, once you get used to the bike, squirming underneath you, it's, it's, uh, it's an unsettling feeling for a little while, but 100 k's into it, it was yeah. sort of yeah, start to settle down a bit. It was good, really good. We have breakfast, back onto the Africa Twins, and off we go, and day two, uh, has a little bit of sand, you know, that wind blow that's coming off the edges of the Gibson Desert onto the tracks. It's not deep, but it's enough to get those guys really thinking that haven't done much sand. And it's not beyond being silly and difficult um, if that bike control is there for them. Sometimes, as I said, um, it's the first time they've ridden big bikes. So they're a bit nervous and, you know, they settle in. Day two is a really good day. So everyone get into that groove through the sandy sections. We see some camels normally on those days. We get closer to that canning stock route, Gibson Desert area. Uh, a few bores and wells along the edge and then eventually getting to the community on the Canning Stock Route which we regularly see when we do this, the Canning Stock Route on the 450s. We have lunch around there, um, boys get to visit the well on the Canning there which gives them a little bit of a, bit of a look. It's pretty bloody clean. And then that afternoon we punch out of the community towards Marble Bar a little bit further few lake areas, big salt pans, which is nice. A lot of the guys have never seen that if they've never done desert tours, which we see a lot of in the Simpson and the Canning. And uh, we camp, again, another bush camp, uh, like night one on the side of the road, good fire. Everyone settles in and, and you can just feel the mood around the fire that night. You know, the guys are, got rid of that nervousness from day one and everyone's into the groove. Oh mate, that was uh, had the best day ever on a motorbike. Really? Oh yeah, I pushed a lot of personal goals and uh, just all started clicking in place. First day was hard, but then, you yeah, know, it was fantastic, loved it. So day three is a pretty straightforward sort of day. We, we leave camp again pretty early, everyone's up. Um, temperatures this year were probably warmer. We were two weeks earlier this year, so everyone's up, it's not too cold and we're into it and this particular day we're in through the Telfer Mine Road uh, and towards Marble Bar and it's the first time we all see bitumen you know in 1400 or 1500 k's so onto the bitumen and then it's that beautiful 
red rocky escarpments and that run into Marble Bar, you feel the temperature rise, obviously because it's one of Australia's hottest towns or is, um, and even this time of year, I think when we arrived there the other day it was 38 degrees, so which is not hot, but you can certainly see how they get those four or five months in high temps. We get in, check into the campground, guys get settled, first bit of grass we've seen in two or three days, which is good, and you've got your own free time, which I think a lot of, a lot of them enjoy and they get to have a look around Marble Bar. Marble Bar's got some great history. Uh, you know, they get to go to the water holes and see some of the great historic sites around town. Ironclad Hotel, which was good. Um, Scooter sucked up his birthday, didn't he? That was a bit much, but um, yeah, no, it was, uh, Marble Bar's a good little town for me. It's, um, and I think it amazes people on the ride into Marble Bar where they see some of the signage, you know, about the temperatures of Marble Bar through the summer. Um, world's biggest shire, you know, the Pilbara. Um, it's extraordinary and, and I think not only just for Australians, but you see the internationals there. It's just, you know, we ran into that guy traveling on his own from Germany and he was just like, I've been to Africa just writing, but Australia is just another level, the size of it. And I think, you know, that's what's really good about Africa Twin stuff. We cover good Ks and, gives people a real perspective of the outback and how big it is. But um, we settle in the Marble Bar, Ironclad Hotel and prepare for the next day. Any gold? Yeah mate, got a nugget. <laughs> <laughs> I think the next day is a lazy start, which is nice. Um, we don't need to be around to the, the gold comet mine till nine in the morning for our, for our tour and, and our chat from Gerard. Um, I really enjoy this and, and sometimes as a tour operator uh, you feel, oh is it enough or do you think people are going to really enjoy it but every time we've been there, a day later the guests come to me and go, thanks for taking us there, that was really interesting, we didn't know that about gold mining and you know the old days when it was picks and um, so that tour there I think is really really nice, it breaks up, you know we're there to ride motorcycles um, we learn a lot about each other, but I think most importantly having a little bit of that dropped in here and there is really, really nice. So we roll out of there after an hour and a half, two hours, which is really cool. Uh, and then through Hillside, the back area, we're on dirt again for about an hour and then onto the, the back highway left and then pretty much bitumen for the rest of the tour. But that, that excitement builds that day when we're just under 400k day, pretty easy day. On the bitumen down the highway, a few refuels, uh, lunch up in the gorge, which is really nice overlooking the lookout. Uh, and then that final run into Karajini, which I think, uh, you know, I haven't done every national park in Australia, but I've done a fair few. And for me, it's one of our best, you know. It's, and the reason I say that is because we're only there for two nights and the guys get a whole day of free time on their own to look at all the beautiful gorges around there. You know, Knox Gorge and the, the ones that are walking distance from camp at the Eco Resort. Um, there's so many and it's so picturesque depending on the light and the time of day you're there. But um, water's a bit cool when you jump in. But it's, there's so much to see and we obviously don't get to see it all but it's a great taste and we have those two nights there. One night we eat out of the truck, one night we eat at the restaurant there to break it up. Uh, but yeah, a, a destination that we'll always go to, Karajini National Park. This is, this is where you need to be. Hey, this is where you need to be all the time. So after a couple of days at Karajini, I think it's everyone's recharged. They've forgotten about the big Ks on day one. Um, you know, we ride out of there right on daybreak. Uh, it's beautiful, it's a little bit cooler in the morning, temperature rises through the day. And I think what hit home hits home for everyone, and, and especially for me, going there every year, is the road, you know, the quads, the road, train, road trains, whether it's a semi, a triple, a quad, whatever it is, the amount of them travel on that back highway, which is obviously something you need to be aware of, um, just pure length and passing them. Uh, it's phenomenal, the trains running out of the mines to Headland or you know, Newman or wherever they're coming and going from, it's just extraordinary and I think it gives customers that aren't from WA, uh, you know, whether they're from the East Coast or down south in Adelaide or somewhere that haven't been there, 
a, a, a little bit of an idea on the size of not only the state of WA but what's going on mining. It was, it's extraordinary and it's an eye opener when you haven't seen a quad for the first time fully loaded and some of those trains that, and the length of them, um, it's extraordinary. So. It's a bitumen day, it's a big day, we push through the day, it's 600 odd k's, all bitumen. Uh, in some ways a little bit of a let down after being on the dirt, but it, again, it puts the size of the country in perspective and our leap up to 80 mile beach. And I think that's just, it's phenomenal. You know, this year the tides didn't really suit us 100%. Um, we had a go at fishing, the boys were out late at night trying to catch a few salmon, but um, it's nice when we can ride in there and catch a few fish to go with the, the beautiful steaks um, that we always supply on tour. So um, it's, a, it's a great destination, a place where we never want to leave. You always want to stay there longer. And uh, yeah, we all bunker down on the beautiful green grass. Guys are out on the beach having a look around. Uh, a lot of guests there fishing. So it's, um, yeah, it's a beautiful destination. I first went there in 2008 and thoroughly enjoyed it and, and been going back ever since. Final days out of 80 Mile Beach and again it's a bitumen run, pretty straightforward, 350 odd k's uh, up to the T-junction where we turn and head in the broom. Pretty straightforward sort of day, I think. A few weary bones on the, on the seventh day of the, of the tour, but um, you know, straightforward run. Uh, we stop, a little bit of refreshment on the side of the road, everyone keeps going, fuel up, and then the run into Broome. I think the excitement for people that have never been to Broome before, um, it's a great town, it's busy, airports flat out all the time with choppers coming in offshore and domestic flights for the tourist season starting. And I think for us getting here at this time of year and so early, I love being just ahead of that wave. You know, there are a lot, a lot of people here already, but it's not what it's like in July or August, so um, yeah, it's, it's nice to get in the broom, regroup, service all the Africa twins and the truck, there's always a day of maintenance for us to clean things up, but as an owner operator, I always question the tours I do and I analyse them every year. Sometimes I might analyse them too much and I just want to give more and more. Um, but at the end of this one, it's, it's a tick again. You know, it has its sparse distances and long distances days where you think, wow. And then it has those beautiful destinations like Karajinian and 80 Mile Beach and Marble Bar and the Gold Mine Tours. So, awesome crew, awesome tour. And we're about to step into another one that just goes to the next level. And that's our one from Broome to Lake Argyle, the Kimberley Tour. And we're off on that tomorrow. Can't wait.